Hey Summit Church, Pastor Eric here. Welcome to Base Camp. If you're wondering what Base Camp is, it's, it's pretty simple. If you were going to climb up a mountain and meet at the summit, you'd stop at a base camp. Katie, have you ever been at a base camp? No. Have you ever climbed a mountain? No. Let's get that going. I have trouble walking in the top of my block. <laughs> Uh, this is Pastor Katie. She is our worship ministry director here at Summit. And we just wanted to pause this week in between meetings at Summit at Base Camp just to take a little bit of a deeper look at last week's message, which you gave, and we appreciated that. And Thanks. then where we're going this week uh, with this week's message. Uh, Katie, you specifically talked about Jesus not being uh, a way, but the way. The way. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you really zeroed in on a couple specific applications um, to our life. Mm -hmm. One of them was around, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you haven't seen this video, by the way, on the message from last Sunday, you need to watch Pastor Katie's message. It's available on the website uh, underneath messages. But it was um, having to do with Jesus being the way through some of the mental health yeah. you know, that we're dealing with. Can you unpack that a little bit yeah. for me? Yeah, so um, I read from one of my favorite pieces of scripture, Psalm 139, um, the verse 23 and 24, it says, Search me and know my anxious thoughts and lead me in the way everlasting. And I just think that that is so key, how David first talks about our anxious thoughts and. Mm -hmm lead me in the way, like lead me in the way everlasting through my thoughts. And um, even just this last few days since Sunday, um, with the election and everything going on, I have found myself even still asking God, okay, when, when anxiety or just fear or whatever creeps in, lead me, God, lead me through this election in my mind in the way everlasting. Mm -hmm. you're, you're still on the throne. Um, Jesus yeah, yeah, for those, president. Yeah, those anxious thoughts, we have them. Yes. Like, I know there are people waiting for the results or... Yep. Like, I went downtown to eat uh, and with someone this week and, you know, anxious would be a word that you could use to describe, you know, Pottery Barn that was completely yeah. boarded up. Yeah, yep. Um, and so those things don't exist, like the boards on the windows don't exist in a building without an anxious thought. Yeah. And I think what I loved about that is David is making a cry for Jesus to be the way through those anxious thoughts. Yeah. And in a sense, I'm not saying you're like Pottery Barn or you out there are like that as well, but if we're boarded up, yeah. you know, as a retail business, that's coming from a place of anxious thoughts. So what are your anxious thoughts? Yeah. What are the things that, that you've literally boarded up because of this? unknown reality in front of you that's causing this really toxic environment internally. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Katie, how did how did that verse really work for you in your own just anxious thoughts? How did not only David's psalm, but what else in, you know, maybe the word of God or a teaching from God or his people help you navigate through as Jesus being the way through those anxious thoughts? I think, I think something that's really important to mental health sometimes, for myself, what I've found is when I can isolate the specific thought, okay, um, it was something that I, I learned from doing something called the 21 day brain detox. Um, Who did that? Who was um, that by? It's by Dr. Carolyn Leaf. She's a Christian neuroscientist. Hmm. Um, Sounds fancy. Pretty fancy. Um, but just being able to isolate, okay, what is it that I'm really anxious about? Like if I had to put a name to it or if I had to give it like a sentence, what is it that I'm, I'm scared about or what, what is the, what am I most nervous about? And then taking that and saying, okay, Lord, this is my thought. I'm, you know, I'm worried about the safety of my children. Okay, Lord, what, what is true about that fear and what is unsubstantiated and what what do you say in your word about that what what does your word say about it and um teach me your truth and just and taking each thought what david says search me and know my anxious thoughts know them help me name them and then give me lead me in your way everlasting yeah i love that and so you know summit here's what 
I would love to challenge you in, as Pastor Katie just sort of alluded to, we're really talking about mental health mm -hmm. and those anxious thoughts that are toxic. So name those this week, write them down and clarify them. Because a lot of times, if we don't know the problem, yep. we can't really address the solution. Mm -hmm. So take a look at those anxious thoughts in your mind and sift through them, but pen them to paper. Mm -hmm. So you can inspect them. Is that yep. a good spot yes. to start? Because then we can trust God to give us His truth. We can trust the Holy Spirit to, when we ask Him, give me your mm -hmm. truth, speak your truth into my mind. We can trust Him to deliver on that. So we've got a little assignment then at base camp this week. Take those thoughts captive and plan them, uh, put them to pen. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to share, because when I was watching the message, I was in Michigan preaching at a, at a church. I wasn't able to be there, but I did watch online. And if you do watch online, make sure that you share uh, the services or invite someone virtually. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna ask you to do it. I just feel that you care enough about the people in your life and their isolation to invite them into ours, so, so do that. But I was watching and I was just struck with this idea of you know, anxiety, this yep. anxious thought. And two things. One thing I want to tell you and you all is that anxiety is really based in a manufactured reality. Yes. It's usually in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, depression, it's, you know, co-laborer and, and like, let's just say toxicity of, of mental health. That's usually based in the past. Yeah. So anxiety is That's based good. in a manufactured reality. Depression, most of the time, finds its root in our past. Hmm. And that's why it becomes this dangerous feedback loop. Um, 55, 58% of people diagnosed with one are diagnosed with the other. Hmm. Because anxiety is trying to convince you that your past is gonna be like your, or your future is gonna be, be like, like your, your past. past. And depression is trying to convince you that your past is gonna be like your future. Hmm. But anxiety exists out there in this unknown manufactured reality that's usually not even based in reality. Mm -hmm. Like your clarity in thought or your all these feelings, it's important to clarify those yep. because it's just this thing out there. So what happens though, Katie, is if you look at anxiety, how did it get there? Mm -hmm. Well, anxiety is really worry. Mm -hmm. And worry, if you plant it in your heart, if you plant it in the soil of who you are, it will grow into a tree and that tree bears fruit. And the fruit on that tree is called anxiety. Now yep. depression is based in a different place. Depression in your heart, if you buried depression, whether it would be something that marred you or hurt you and experience, all this sadness based in the past, you bury that in your soul, that grows into a tree too. Yeah. And uh, rather, excuse me, in, in depression is the fruit on that tree, but if you track it back, the roots of a tree that grew is really fear. Hmm. You fear that the past is gonna be like the future. You're afraid of what happened, that it'll happen again. You're afraid of the unforgiveness that is there. This is, this is where like depression holds its power. It's rooted in fear. Yep. Grows into this tree, bears fruit called depression, anxiety. It's worry that grows yep. and uh, grows into anxiety. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Okay, so you got these two trees and they've got two sources. Jesus talks about these. So I just want to share this with you all here at base camp and Katie, you too as well. Uh, Jesus says in John 14, I love what he says, peace I give to you. Mm -hmm. So the opposite of anxious thoughts is peace. Peace, not as the world gives you. Mm -hmm. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Mm -hmm. Do not let your hearts have like anxiety. Mm -hmm. Do not worry is another translation. Mm -hmm. And do not be afraid. So right here, Jesus takes worry and fear he puts them together and he says, don't do these things. Don't go there. Yeah, because he knows mm -hmm. that these are gonna grow into these yeah. trees, mm -hmm. one of them being depression, one of them being anxiety, these mental health things that we're, that we're dealing with. So if we can encourage you today, or wherever you're watching this, uh, on this episode of Base Camp, <laughs> uh, make sure that you take captive those thoughts. Yes. Distill them down to a sentence, to a phrase, to a place, and commit those to the Holy Spirit, working in that situation, through that situation, mm -hmm. to bring you from anxious thoughts, uh, really, to peaceful thoughts. Mm -hmm. This battle that exists 
it's in our mind. Yeah. It's here where we have to take these thoughts captive and allow the Holy Spirit to work. Because uh, it's, it's really important for people, I think, to know that Jesus is the way yeah. through this anxiety. Yes, he is. One thing I just want to note too is, you know, as a pastor, I, I tend to look at the way that people are constructed as um, how scripture says. We're a mind, a soul, and a body. And there's our mind, will, and emotions, that's our spirit, there's our soul, and there's our body. And anxiety sometimes exists in all things. Yeah. Uh, not, no, not so much our, our soul that is alive in Christ, but our mind, will, and emotions, this is where this battle is. And then you have your body that sometimes it's your diet, sometimes it's your lack of you know, movement and all these things that are, mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily just a pill and a prayer, but sometimes it's, it's definitely. The whole person, the whole, the whole person. person health. Yeah, and I think I think we we overlook that sometimes in the church, where we tend to ignore some of the other ways that Scripture says who we are. Yeah, that we're just gonna go away with this mm -hmm. uh, through one of these methods. It's yeah. maybe all of these methods. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, God has created all of them. So at base camp, this episode, just want to dig in with that, so you can take those thoughts captive. That's your homework. This week at at Summit, you're gonna want to make sure that you uh, tune in live. Uh, or that you, um, well, not tune in live, that you show up live. Come and you to church. Tune in uh, on, online. I'm gonna be talking a little bit about being a bridge to the future. And one of the keys that I think is paramount and that is, um, is forgiveness. Yes. When we hold on to unforgiveness, we lose the ability to hold on to joy. Mm -hmm. And when we hold on to unforgiveness, it's, it's like we miss what's in front. And I like to put it this way, unforgiveness is, is the rear view mirror in your car and forgiveness is the windshield. <laughs> so how do we go from, from being back. a people that look mm -hmm. back to look forward? And I think there's a power there yeah. uh, in forgiveness. So we'll be talking about that um, at Summit this weekend. Pastor Katie, thanks. Thank you. So much for being here at Base Camp. And God bless y'all. Have a great week. We'll see you at the see Summit. See you Sunday.